What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today, as you can tell by my beanie, it is cold. It is freezing cold actually, 32 degrees, and uh, we are going to be working on the Tahoe. Now, chances are this is probably going to be a two-part video because I don't know that I'm gonna have enough time to do all of it in one. So, uh, anyway, what we are gonna be doing today, guys, we are going to be changing the oil in this thing. Uh, I like to do that anytime I purchase a vehicle, just to make sure. Now, he said that he changed the oil, and I have no reason not to trust him, but I just like to put the oil that I like in it, which is Mobile One in my daily drivers, and that is what we are going to do. So we're gonna change the oil and filter. Now, uh, I a little bit of a story here. I went to look at some wheels for this thing, and on my way down there, my windshield wipers took a dump on me. Now, not a big deal, other than the fact that, um, Look how loose that is. I replaced the windshield wipers on the drive and I'll tell you about this story here in just a second, but the spring in this is bad. And so it's not pressing down in the center like it's supposed to. So it's not wiping almost right in my line of sight. So I have some new wipers arms. That is what is down there. Already replaced the blades. So I'm just gonna take those blades off and put them on the new wiper arms. You guys saw me do that on the green truck as well. Just over time, these springs wear out and they don't keep pressure. Look how much, I mean, it shouldn't, it shouldn't do that. So uh, anyway, so the story on the wheels. Decided to buy a set of wheels for this and tires. These tires are almost at the end of life. And I thought, well, we'll try to find some wheels, some good used wheels and tires uh, on Facebook Marketplace. So I found some two hour drive from my house and uh, I drive two hours, one direction, get there and the person doesn't show up, won't answer their phone. And I'm sure if, if you guys have had this happen to you before, it's, it's extremely frustrating. I drove two hours in the pouring rain and uh, like I said, they didn't show up. So I kind of wrote those off. Well, I had some people that I work with, they actually got a hold of those people and they said they had lent their phone out to somebody, their kids, and uh, they completely forgot I was coming and they were really sorry. So they would meet me again. Now, sorry, there's a loud truck going by. This guy met me. Now, here's where this story is even more crazy. So I gave him a price on the wheels. He was asking 800 bucks, okay, uh, wheels and tires. And I'll show you what I what what happened here in a minute. But um, I offered him 600. He said he would take it. I get there, the wheels are not in real great shape. So uh, I told him I didn't want them. Now, generally I don't do that to people uh, unless things are just not as advertised. But I just told him I didn't want them and that um, you could just sell them to somebody else. So I left. He calls me like five minutes later and asked me what I would give for them. So I offered him 300 bucks. I, and I told him, I said, you could probably sell these for 500. He didn't care, he needed the money. So he took 325 is what we sold on. So let's look at what I bought. Uh, they're actually in the back here. This is my parts hauler right now. Wheels and tires, and the tires are in mediocre shape at best, but the wheels, uh, I'll pull them out here in a second so you guys can see them, but they are 22 inch Cadillac chrome wheels. And what kind of turned me off to this is the fact that, look at the chrome peeling off the wheel on the inside. You can see it flaking off. And I know from experience that that's just gonna go to the face of the wheel. So you can see it's already made it here. And uh, so my, that's why I walked away. I didn't really care to, um, man, that, I didn't really care to have a set of wheels that are gonna peel. I'm gonna be driving this thing in winter. As you guys know, salt is really hard on these things. So I just told him I didn't want them. Well, at the price that he gave me, man, these tires are not real great. Not as good as I thought, but at the price that he gave me, I couldn't go wrong. So I decided to buy them. What I'm planning on doing here is I'm going to scuff up the barrels in this video and I'm gonna put some uh, basically Rust-Oleum style paint on them. I'm gonna have to tape off some areas obviously, but I'm gonna paint the barrels and uh, get them nice and scuffed up. But let's get these things out of the truck and then we'll take a look at the faces. These things are like ridiculously heavy. They'll probably give me like five miles per gallon less mileage. I don't know guys, these tires are pretty shot. I may end up, may end up doing something else here. Well, we'll get them unloaded anyway. The faces on the wheels look really, really good. It's just the barrels that are gross. I 
always put a towel down too. I don't want my interior all trashed. Golly, those are heavy. All right, now that I got that off there, we'll show you guys the faces. So now that they're out of the truck, let's take a look. And look guys, you see that chrome? I, uh, the only issues with the faces other than that chrome part is this one's got a little bit of a bend here. Uh, it's not gonna affect anything, but I'm pretty sure guys, I'm just gonna sell these. I, uh, the more I look at them, the worse they look to me. And I just, the tires are shot. They're, uh, you can see they're cracking. And I'm not one to put, I had a blowout one time and I'm not one to put uh, used tires on a truck very often unless they're in really good shape, like a, a fresh set of takeoff. So I think what I'll do is I think I'm going to clean them up a little bit and uh, just list them back for sale. But that brings me to, um, obviously we're going to get to the oil change and the wiper here in just a second, but it brings me to talk about what am I going to do. I want to get a different set of wheels and tires for this truck. I've got a couple other sets located guys, but what I'm thinking is ever since I got the truck painted here, I've been going back and forth on getting a chrome or at least a polished set of wheels to really match um, the chrome bumpers on the front and back. I actually think that would look a lot better than the satin wheels that are on it. Uh, I like the satin wheels on a um, maybe a car that doesn't have as much chrome. So what I'm thinking is maybe I should just take those wheels get some different tires and put them on this. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. And then we'll just find a different set of wheels for this truck. I, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm gonna do at this point. I was really excited about finding these because they go for a pretty good amount of money. 800 was a deal um, for just wheels. Maybe not a deal, but 600 for sure was a deal for just the wheels. And for what I paid for them, obviously uh, I don't think I'm hurt. I'll definitely be able to get my money back out of them. but. Uh, let's go on. We'll move on. I'm, I'm going to push these out of the way. Like I said, I think I'm just going to clean them up and list them for sale. But uh, like I said in the comments, let me know what you think about that. Maybe swapping those wheels to this. These are a 17 and I really wanted a 22 because on these big cars like this, a 22 just fills it out a lot better, uh, makes it look a lot nicer. But a 20 would look better than the 17 that I've got. But I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think. I'm going to pop the hood open. Uh, we're gonna get into the car and we'll talk about uh, getting the old oil out of this thing The guy said that it probably had another thousand miles, but the light keeps um, Flickering on the dash. So like I said when I buy a new vehicle, I always like to change the oil anyway, but I'm gonna crawl under this thing We'll get the pan uh, The oil pan under there obviously to catch it and uh, get this old oil out Well now that we have this thing lifted um, the downside to like these Z71s they have a ton of like plates on the bottom So I just lifted on that front cross member up there and there is a piece of plastic, but um, I didn't take it off. I just lifted around it. It doesn't put much pressure on it, uh, but there is metal underneath it. So uh, I do have some jack stands under here for all those people that think I don't work safe, but we are ready to get this out. Now it is a 15 millimeter, and then I do have my uh, filter wrench to take this off. Now you guys can see that it does have a little bit of an oil leak. We are really not gonna concern ourselves with that because well, that's a huge undertaking to fix an oil pan gasket in one of these. You got to pull the motor. Uh, well, that would be the easiest way anyway. But uh, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to crack this loose, let this oil drain out. Now, the engine is somewhat warm. That is the way I like to change my oil. And like always, guys, I will list all of these parts like uh, the filter wrench and uh, all the oil that I'm using. Everything that's in the video will be in the description. But let's knock this uh, bolt out and get this old oil out. Now that we've got the oil mostly drained out, uh, one cool thing that GM does is they put the filter really close to the pan on some cars. And holy cow, whoever put this on, put it on tight. I may have to set the camera down and loosen it up. This is no lie, the tightest I've ever seen an oil filter put on. It is, it was absolutely ridiculous, guys. I had to, I had to wrench on it for quite, a, quite a while to get it loose. Once we get that off, don't tighten your oil filters that tight. There's no sense in it. I don't know if they felt like they put it on with an impact that was so tight. I'm gonna let this drain out. We'll get that filter out of the way and then I'll go grab the new stuff. 
now that the filter's off and it's pretty much drained completely out, I like to clean the surface off up here with just a towel. And you want to make sure that rubber gasket's off. I know I tell you guys this in every oil change, but as tight as that one was on, uh, it'd be pretty easy for that to stick. But once we get this all cleaned off, probably should clean the whole thing, but I don't really want to do that. We're going to get the new filter in place. And before I do that, I always like to put a little bit of oil in the filter. Um, the way it, the way it sets, um, you have the ability to pour some in the filter. So I pour uh, as much as I can in the filter and then I put a little bit on the rubber ring. I'm going to attempt to do this with one hand. Hopefully it doesn't fall over and spill, but my luck it will. So as I said, I pour this until it's just about full, just so it's not completely dry starting. And then I put a little bit around the rim here. And we'll get this screwed into place, not nearly as tight as the last one, but in place nonetheless. Now we're ready to go back on. You don't want to fill it too full, otherwise you're going to spill it while you're trying to spin it into place. But you also notice that this is a longer filter than the last one. And I'll, like I said, I'll list this in the parts below, but this, uh, the longer one just filters better in my opinion. I just like the way it works. But once we get it into place, then we'll put the oil plug back in and we'll be good to go. Well, unfortunately, the parts store uh, had the wrong thing in the container, so I'm going to have to go back and get the right filter. Uh, the part number on the box was right, but the filter does not fit, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this off, and we'll get the plug back in place at least. That's the downside to ordering stuff, and maybe somebody returned it and just put it in the wrong package, but normally I order this stuff online, but I wanted to do this today. And uh, so I dealt with using a local parts store. But uh, get this on here, get it snugged up, not too tight there either. I won't show you guys me spinning this back on. I'll get that and we'll move to the top once I get this new filter in place. Well, as you guys can see, it's a little later in the day. I tried to order a longer filter from my local parts store. They didn't have it, so I'm just gonna put the regular size on it for now. It's not a huge deal. I just like the extra filtering capacity, but I do like Wix better than the Delco anyway. So not a big deal. I'm gonna put this one on. Now I did, while I was waiting, get these wheels all clean. Uh, well, at least as clean as I can get them. I also scrubbed down the barrels, but you can see in a couple spots where they're peeling, but uh, cleaned up pretty good, guys. Honestly, they probably would work. I just don't think I wanna run them because I'm gonna be using this thing in the winter. The salt and grime is gonna be really hard on them, but let's go ahead, finish up this oil filter, and then we will get on to the wipers. Hopefully I'm not going to run out of daylight before all this happens. So we now have the filter tightened up and we are ready to pour some oil in. You can see I've got my funnel in place. Also have a couple towels handy. And we are going to start with um, five quarts. So this thing calls for five and a half. Chances are we probably didn't get all of the oil out of it. So I always start with maybe a half to a quart less. Um, and then once I get it started up, let everything circulate through, then I check it again. It is really cold today, guys. It's warmed up a little, but this needed to be done. Like I said, it still showed a thousand miles, still need to change, but the time was up. So wanted to do it. All right, once we have the five quarts in there, we'll pull this out, set it aside. Just so you guys know, I always put some towels right here in the corner. Just gives it a spot to hold that and uh, it not leak everywhere while I'm tightening everything up and checking it. So I'm gonna go start the truck and uh, then we'll check it and see where we're at. Now we're here in the truck and uh, sometimes you'll get a low oil pressure while it's filling up, so don't worry about that. You'll watch the gauge. And there we go. You can see my change oil light, which we will reset here in just one minute. But it looks good. I'm gonna go check it and uh, make sure everything's good. And uh, then we'll move on to resetting this. Very rarely when I shorted a half quart do I have to add any, but we'll see. It's so clear, you can barely see it. 
It is a little low. We're gonna add another quart and we should be good. So I actually think that the manual uh, was wrong or I got some misinformation because it took six and a half quarts. So I started with five, ended up putting another quart and a half in. Uh, so six and a half quarts is what it took. I still guys like to short it a little bit just because if you don't get all of it out, you don't wanna overfill it. So um, like I said, it took six and a half quarts is what it ended up taking. That's with the new filter. So let's go inside. I'm not gonna shut this all the way because probably have to have it open to get those loose. Let's go to reset this oil life system. Most annoying beep in the world. All right, so on this car, if you go to your, like, I guess it's a picture of a gas can, you go all the way to oil life, and then you're just gonna hold down the it, it looks like an inner key is what it looks like. It's an arrow pointing. Just hold it down and you'll see it reset to 100. Maybe my key's not working. There it goes, oil life reset. Just took a little longer than I thought, but uh, go to it with, like I said, the little gas icon and then you're gonna reset it by using um, the enter or return. But now we have 100%, we are all good. Let's get those wipers off. Now onto the wipers, you have to take these little plastic covers off, which should just snap off. You may have to get a flathead in the gloves. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a flathead screwdriver. This one I took off before the glove is off, but it's a 13 millimeter to loosen this up. And if you have the original, if you have the original windshield, there's markings on it to tell you where the wipers go in their down position. But if you don't, then um, you need to mark it with some tape. So just a piece of blue tape. Now, this one I think has been changed before from the looks of the way it's setting. We're gonna loosen these up. And then a lot of times, guys, I tap. I need to take this out. But I get a hammer and I actually tap on this uh, with it threaded up where I'm not, I'm not hitting it really hard just to give it, um, kind of loosen it up a little bit. Just a small flat blade screwdriver should be enough to get this off of here. Once we get it off of there, we'll loosen that one up as well. This is way harder to work on than my lowered truck, that's for sure. A little bit of a reach here. Then, like I said, I generally take this guy and just just tap it a little bit, and that loosens things up. You don't want to get real crazy because you don't want to mess up the threads, and uh, obviously you don't want to mess up the mechanism below. I'm going to pull these loose. And we'll see if we can get these out of the way. I may have to close the hood. I think I'm gonna have to. Let's get all our stuff out of the way and we'll close the hood. See if we can get these things off of here. We have to get a ladder, guys, to reach this center one. Neither one of them are real loose either. Man, these things are on here. All right, I think I've got that one. I do still think I'm gonna have to get a ladder though for the one on the other side. Believe me, this was more nerve wracking on my green truck because I was really worried about scratching something. I, I don't want to scratch this either, but it's not as nerve wracking. Let's see if we can get a bucket here. That'll help. Maybe we can get this thing to come loose. All right. 
think I got it. I think I got it. Felt a little loose anyway. All right. Now I just got to transfer these blades, which man, they don't fit real great over to the new ones. Now we just, I got this off the old one, put it into place and swing this shut. I don't know. I, I kind of, I don't have a real brand preference with wiper blades, but I guess this fits okay. It didn't fit real well on my other arm, I, probably because they were worn out. But now um, I'm going to take you guys off the tripod and show you what I'm talking about as far as the markings on the window. You see those little black markings? Hopefully you guys can see that. There's one right there. Um, that is where your wiper blade goes. So um, just depends on whether you want it on the top side or bottom side. Generally, uh, that the top of that would be the bottom of your wiper blade. So uh, however you guys want to position them, but that is where they need to go. You need to keep your line out of the way as well. We can always move it after the fact. You just don't want to pinch it. Now, once I, once I get it where I want it, it's about right there. We can go ahead and tighten the nut back down on this side. I think that's where I want it. Actually, I'm gonna move it down a little to where that's on the bottom side. Sorry if you guys can't hear me. I'm gonna move it to where that looks a little better to me. Yeah, I think I like that better. I put the uh, top of the wiper blade on the bottom of that diagonal or that vertical line that you saw in the window. All we need to do is tighten this up. And then we'll have to obviously hook up our windshield wiper lines. But um, about that, this thing has a leak in the wiper blade or the wiper tank, the fluid. And uh, so. I actually don't have any wiper fluid, but I'm still going to hook it up because down the road I might end up replacing that. We are set. Uh, all we have to do is just plug that line back in. It actually loops through on the other side here. Try to take note of this when you're taking it off. That way you kind of know which way to route it where it's not in the way. You don't want it to get pinched while the wipers are going. We got that plugged in. Now onto the other side. Now I will tell you guys, these things are side specific and I'll list that down below in the description, but you will need to uh, put the right one on the right side. fits way better. Hopefully this fixes my rain driving issues. This one I stuck the bottom of that or the top of that line is even with the bottom of the wiper blade but it looks the most even there so we'll see I generally you don't have much interference unless you get them way out of whack but if you have some issues obviously you can move them around are set. Plug this line back in. And all we have to do is put our caps back on and then I won't make you guys watch me test them. I mean it's pretty self-explanatory the way they go on. But uh, I think I've got one more thing I want to do today. Well I got my caps back on. I did test them um, and they're working great. But the very last thing I want to do guys is 
And I'll also, before that, I actually killed two birds with one stone. So obviously the spring was worn out on the inside here, but look how faded and nasty these are. So those are nice new and black, looks a lot nicer, kind of cleans up the truck. But you guys know that I hate antennas, right? So if you didn't catch my video on my green truck in there, I did an antenna delete, which I may do in the future on this. I don't know if I can find one of these pieces at the salvage yard. As I told you, it's discontinued. Uh, so if I find one in the salvage yard, chances are I probably will do that on this as well. But there's a big, ugly OnStar antenna up top. And so to be quite honest with you, getting rid of this one, it's not a huge deal to me. It doesn't look quite as clean because of that. But I do want to put a shorter one on there. So I have a shorter one here. And uh, I'm going to get this one out of the way. And we'll put the other one on and then we'll take a look at the difference obviously uh the new ones are quite a bit shorter now to get the old one off all you need is a 10 millimeter i have a little plastic tool but i can't find it that takes these off and doesn't scratch them but chances are your new one's going to need an adapter and most of the time they come with a couple different pieces little studs that screw on And then we're just gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit of tape on this before I tighten it up just so I don't scratch it. So you can see I put a little bit of blue tape on it. And you don't have to do this, I'm just, maybe I'm too picky. And the new one is a different size. It's actually standard. So we got it tightened up, pull our tape off, and we are set. Guys, I think that wraps it up for today. We were able to get a few things done, not as much as I wanted to. I was really excited about showing you guys a new set of wheels and tires. These did clean up, like I said, really well, but just don't want to get into that. And they need new tires. There's no sense in doing that. So, like I said, hit the comments. Let me know what you think about taking the wheels off of this truck, putting them on this. Obviously, those tires, I'm going to keep those tires because they're brand new when I did this truck. But... Uh, let me know what you think about those wheels on this truck and maybe getting a different set, maybe a chrome set for that. But able to get the new windshield wipers on, which was a much needed thing. Kind of some maintenance issues, obviously, with the oil change. Got a new antenna on there, so that looks a lot nicer. Uh, while I was under there, guys, I noticed a couple things that were leaking. Obviously, you guys seen the oil pan, but the steering rack... Uh, it actually doesn't have a rack. It has a steering box, but the steering box looks to be leaking a little bit on the bottom side And I'm not really sure about the tie rod in so that may be something we do down the road The biggest thing I want to do though is before we get a big winter uh, Blast which we may not get but I want to get some different tires Look for that coming because obviously we're gonna do some different tires I did not buy this thing for it to be a project guys I don't want you to think that this is gonna take up a ton of time But you guys did say you wanted to see some stuff on it. So I want to uh, show you some stuff that I'm doing and uh, some maintenance stuff is what we worked on today. One cosmetic thing with the antenna. And like I said, if I'm at the salvage yard and happen to run across an Escalade, I might do the antenna mod like I did on my truck. If you guys haven't seen that video, I will link it right here up above. But guys, if you did enjoy this video, if you like this content, if you think I'm crazy for buying these wheels, I don't think I got a bad deal. I think I can make money on them. But uh, smash that thumbs up button guys if you're not subscribed i don't know what you're doing you got to subscribe we got a ton of stuff coming on a lot of different vehicles so if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe ring the bell icon that we are notified every single time we drop a new video and well guys stay tuned to see what we work on next <laughs>